Well, Lloyd Banks plans to charge fans $100. You goddamn right that's what he said. That sounds crazy to people who don't know shit. But I start to think that there's a lot of artists out here who have gotten lazy as f DIY. Okay, DIYers. I don't know if you heard, but recently, Lloyd Banks of the legendary G Unit Records is making a pretty controversial move that some people are championing, like myself, and some people are criticizing, like, who do you think you are? As the headline reads here on Double XL, Lloyd Banks plans to charge fans $100 for his mixtape Cold Corner 3. The article says Lloyd Banks is making plenty of noise with his just released Halloween Havoc for the 72nd hour mixtape. And he's not done yet. The former G unit soldier recently revealed that he plans to charge fans $100 for his next mixtape project, Cold Corner 3. Lloyd Banks is an independent artist right now. And the output of music that he's putting in, the fact that he has multiple series, lets you know, hey, this is somebody who stayed consistent. I'm sorry that there's some of you that think that if a rapper doesn't exist on your radio or on your mainstream outlets, that they don't exist. No, no, he exists and he's killing it right now. The Queen's New York rhymer jumped on X last Wednesday to announce Cold Corner 3 will be a paid release, costing fans $100. He says, in response to a person who seemed shocked by the rap vet's output of dropping two stellar mixtapes in one year, the former G-Unit member told the fan his future plans for Cold Corner 3. He said, Cold Corner 3 won't be on streaming sites. Hello. Only available through me, direct to consumer, for $100. Then we'll see if they back that talking up. Because there's some diehard Lloyd Banks fans out here. There's no way that you can exist on such a large stage as a part of G-Unit, or just in a part of any group as large as, as they were and not have people that follow you no matter where you go. Even if that means less access that you have to mainstream outlets, they're gonna follow you because they became a fan. Another fan chimed in and expressed his concern that $100 for a mixtape is too pricey, but Banks was undeterred. Fam, it don't matter how many examples we've seen of it. First of all, I gotta talk about Nip. Why are there still doubters out there? And my question for this is, who the fuck are you? Now, if you're a fan, quote unquote, that won't pay for it, you speak for you, but to be so arrogant and bold and say, oh, I, I don't know about that for a mixtape when you've never sold anything. Shut up. Damn, dog. This economy sucks at that 100 is a crazy high. I've been waiting on that shit for a decade. I'll probably buy it. But damn, how about $50? Banks reply $10 per year. That's not bad. <laughs> In this section of the Joe Button podcast, he and the crew were talking specifically about this new Lloyd Banks project, and they raised some really interesting points that may sound very familiar if you've been watching video content on this channel. But then he also announced that he's going to do Cold Corner 3. Okay. And he's going to sell it himself for $100. You goddamn right that's what he said. And he received a, quite a bit of backlash. A lot for of backlash. Really? Because that sounds crazy to people who don't know shit. I've been very vocal on my Twitter the last few weeks since I left streaming. The amount of backlash that I've been getting, none from people who represent the streaming companies I've been criticizing. It's all have been artists who rely upon streaming, I guess, to feed them. And if you're relying upon fractions of a dollar to feed you, you're down bad, bucko. There was a time that artists led, so afraid of their fan base leaving them, they will do literally whatever their people say they do. No, there was a time where the album you got was the album that the artist felt was the best representation of what they could do in that period. That sounds crazy to the people that consume music today. Because you pay $10 that, a month for anything. The people that pay $10 a month or $12 a month, whatever it is, and get every song from these streaming platforms, that is where the music business is. This is... First of all, dope. And as someone who has put out music through like Bandcamp or some of these sites where they can kind of pay whatever, I have had multiple supporters spend that kind of money on a $10 project. Mm. So it's not crazy. And I've bought projects in the same manner. Someone I just like and support. You putting this out, pay whatever you want. I'm gonna give you $100. I fuck with your shit. Fam, let me tell you how powerful the influence of a major label system is. Let me tell you how powerful it is. They have convinced them that the best model for them to have a sustainable career is to take the route where they have to give a ridiculous amount of work to see just a little bit of scratch compared to actually selling smaller units. We're not talking about doing units like they did in the 90s, just smaller units. You could use a reverse 
royalty calculator and see you don't have to sell a whole lot of cds to get to 56,000 streams i want to say it's 200 dollars. you sell 20 cds at 10 dollars. you've made that but i start to think that there's a lot of artists out here who have gotten lazy as fuck by never having to go see people never having to leave the house never having to upload a photo of yourself never having to actually sell to someone so i understand and i'm sure banks understands why you're scared you can't bot your way to a sale in front of a human being when they're standing in front of you it ain't for everybody but there's going to be enough people that love your shit that will pay whatever you Put the ticket at. And I'm probably going to make more money than if I put it on a DSP. Hello. No probably about it. There's That's no the part yet. that you. Hello. Oh God, I'm gonna tell the truth and I'm gonna tell it. When I say it, I'm just sneaking on YouTube. When they say it, don't it make you scratch your chin a little bit? The beautiful thing about cultivating a real fan base who really will support you is that right there. I can yes. go put a project out. Hey, it only take a couple of y'all to buy it. I'm going to make more money off of this small percentage of y'all that buy it than if I go throw it up on a DSP and get 0.001 cent a string. We overestimate how many people we need to make a living for ourselves. Every time you hear criticism from somebody who doesn't believe in selling physical, they always say, we, 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 nigga, we're not part of the same label. It's just you. What are your current needs? What are your needs in your state to make a minimum wage? Start to do the math of what that would actually have to be in physical sales of something. It doesn't have to be CDs or vinyls, but there are people who buy those. A lot of people. A hundred super fans would change your life drastically. You don't need two million streams to make a living at this. These are people who represent 20% of your audience, but they buy 80% of your product. They don't always got the money, but when they do, they come into your store. Me and my partner, Passport Gift, have put out a bunch of projects. In, in the last couple of years, we put it out on Bandcamp first. Shout out to Bandcamp. Mm -hmm. And we make more money off the week or two that it's there by itself than we do getting hundreds of thousands of streams per song. Is, is it me or is it just people can't do regular math? You're bad at math, but I'm giving you an A plus in confidence. Just doing what I gotta do. Extra credit. But when you just do simple math, I understand why Prince specifically, when he was, he, just, he pulled his music off of streaming. I understand why he was so frustrated with you niggas. You can't see the benefit because daddy streaming and told you that that's the only way you can really make money long term. There's no money in streaming, yo. And your real supporters will support you. So at $100, if, if 2,000 people bought your shit, you made 200 grand. Mm -hmm. For some people, this is just another stream of revenue. I salute you. Get on your grind. grind. You, need, you need many streams of revenue in case one of them doesn't necessarily have a good season. But for those of you that are only leaning on that alone, you're trying to convince me that you've made a more wise decision? My friend, you don't know basic math. Be prepared, because if you thought the 360 deal was bad, you're in a half man, half amazing deal. Because when Spotify eventually get bought out by one of these major labels, nigga, you're signed to a 720, 1080 deal. It's gonna be crazy, because you're gonna be convinced you're in a better deal, because they're gonna offer you now 0 0.0007. You're gonna be like, man, I'm winning. You're not making any actual money until you're getting into hundreds of millions of streams. And which listen. is really fucking hard to get, by the way. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He said hundreds of millions of streams. You think that you got the same chance to go make better or around the same amount of money as the person you're copying? This is the future of music. The same way that I said the shows would become a luxury ticket, a luxury item, music is going in that direction. And and the people that will be first to that party are the people that own their rights mm -hmm. and own their music. D -D -D -I -Y. Somebody gonna have to tell the truth and I'm gonna tell it. How many videos have I said DIY is just our time? The writing is on the wall. But I don't wanna convince you of independence. I'm just here to show you the evidence. But I do recognize that some of you may be in a place that I was at when I was afraid to sell my art because for the longest, everybody told me there's no money in music. I like this woman's perspective here. Let's hear what she said. Art is the only thing that you can put a price point on and nobody can justify it except for you. So I could charge you a thousand dollars for the jacket, but I could also give you this jacket because I'm an artist. Yeah. You can't do that with real estate. You can't do it with jewelry because you have to have somebody appraise it. But as an artist, I could say, yeah, that bad, two grand and not even blink. You're like, but because you believe in me believing that that's two grand, you'll pay two grand. Mm. You believe in my belief. Like, wow, she really believes that this is two grand. I'm going to pay two grand for that because you're so, like, strongly connected to my story and my artistry. What I love about that point is that until you first believe 
that your art is worth something. It won't matter what other people are willing to pay or not willing to pay. They won't pay it because you won't give the opportunity to pay it. In this space and time where we have the, the opportunity to do things like offer based models. Matter of fact, before I get into that point, no, 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 wait, I want to get, I want to show you one more video. Shout out to the homie Glasses Malone who came through here. Listen to what Glasses said. But again, you can't talk to everybody in the record business about the music business. Because mm -hmm. I know it feel the same. Damn. Because I've never I've never separated the two. That's why they're not called music companies. Right. Death Row Records. Right now we get to set <laughs> what success is for us. Yeah. We signed a record deal. Like somebody started reaching out to me the other day and they was like, oh, I know what that looks like. Mm. So if I if I don't have a plan to to help them get a record to gold or yeah. to win a Grammy, we shouldn't be doing those deals. For the longest, I thought that the music business and the record business were the same thing. And for some people, they are. It is the same thing. But the point that Glasses was making in that interview, which I highly suggest you check out, is that when you're in the record business, you are supposed to do really great numbers with your vanity statistics. You need to have hella followers. You need to make it look like it's profitable. Because there's a lot of money behind this idea that you are profitable. You must get the major features. You must have the clout. You must be the trending topic. You must get the millions of streams. Regardless of if you're making real money or not, this is a part of it. You must win the Grammys. But for the longest, I've been saying there's two different ecosystems when it comes to the traditional major labels and when it comes to independent. The truth of the matter is this. When image supersedes the product, you are in the record business. Because think about how many talentless hacks exist there but because of their skillful ways as major labels of marketing these artists we come to like their personality and charisma and don't even care about the music necessarily matter of fact their charisma make may make us like their music somewhat but in the music business where there exists people like currency where you won't even know how many units the man sold because that's not what you base your respect on you base it on the fact that he's just putting in work La Russell, another one. Last thing I want to say, the most important word when it comes to marketing is perception. There are companies out here right now, we don't even know we're saying a company name when we ask, for instance, for a bandage. I do hear them say, hey, you got any Band-Aids? That's a brand. How many times have you gone to a fast food company and you said, I'd like a Coke with that? That's a brand. Why? Because the perception is strong. The perception is so strong based upon their marketing that people make illogical decisions and say things completely not the truth simply because of the perception. That is why DIYers we gotta stay on top of our marketing. I suggest a book called The 22 Immutable Laws of Marketing. One of the greatest marketing books. There's many mediums that we can market ourselves, obviously through music itself, through social media, through our merchandise, through the interviews that we do, through the podcast that we create, through the reaction videos and all these different things that we have at our disposal. What you got to understand is that if you do not prioritize your marketing, in addition to your music, marketing is just the language of how to get to the people that really rock with what you're doing. Great music gets ignored every single day. Doesn't matter how great my music is. If the perception is they're great, but like, I don't know, like the beats suck. You cannot unchange that person's opinion. And if you do have an opportunity, it's going to take years before or that a person's opinion changes. It is very important that DIYers we refocus if you're not already focused on being in the music business. That is just me reiterating how important it is for you to not only treat your art as an art, but your business as an art. But those are my thoughts, DIYers. Let me know what you think. DIYers. DIYers, if you enjoyed this content, make sure that you hit the like button and maybe even consider subscribing. Come on, man. Stop, stop being greedy. Peace.